Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. In today's video, I'm going to demo an 888 running in maximum mode on my breadboard here. Now, the purpose of breadboarding this today is with my motherboard project, uh, I've been wanting to add the 8087, and that requires maximum mode, not minimum mode. So here's my current uh, mother or processor card. As you can see, there's no bus controller and no coprocessor, and that runs in minimum mode. So let me introduce you to the board real quick. We've got the processor here, got the 8288 uh, bus controller here, system clock here, 8284, and LS139 for decoding the memory uh, ROM RAM chips, address latch here, Data transceiver here, an 8255 for an I.O. bus. Uh, so our ROM is here, a RAM is here, and some LEDs to demo things are working. So let's just make sure it still works after I touched all the wires. And it does. Okay, so what I did was I programmed it with the reset button here. It's going to write 8, and then it's going to write a D, and then C's, and it's going to hold, and then it's going to count down. Now, I know this is working from the, the ROM and the RAM because the delay is a call function and which uses the stack. So now I'm reading and writing to uh, RAM with the stack, and so it works. So let me, uh, let me run down how this is connected. This is also for my own reference when I get confused in a few months and I need to review after I tear this apart. So on the 8288, the way I've connected it, uh, let's just start, just go down the pins. Pin one is connected to, it's a IOB, it's a, it's kind of sets the mode for the controller and I've connected it to low, to ground. Pin two is click. Pin three is S1 and I put a pull up resistor on there. Pin four is uh, data transit and receive. The uh, pin five is address latch. Uh, pin six is enable, and this is supposed to put. If it's in high, it's supposed to float the um, command lines, and low it enables the command lines. Uh, pin seven is memory read. Pin eight is advanced memory write. I haven't decided if I want to use the advanced write or just regular write yet, but right now I don't have it connected. Uh, pin 9 is memory write, and that's what I'm using. Pin 10 is ground. Pin 11 is I.O. write, and that's what I'm connected to. Pin 12 is advanced uh, I.O. write, and I haven't decided. Some people use it, some people don't. I've seen it different uh, both ways. Uh, pin... 13 is I.O. read. Uh, pin 14 is internet interrupt acknowledge. I don't have an interrupt control on here, so it's disconnected. Pin 15 is CEN. This one needs to be connected high for the uh, chip to work. Pin 16 is data enable. Now I'm going to pause on this one for a second. So data enable, I was having the hardest time getting this thing up and running. And just prior to making this video, I, I got it running, that's why I made the video. I found out that this is opposite of minimum mode. So it's active high instead of active low, which means I cannot use it the same way that I use with my minimum mode uh, processor. So at first I ran it through an LSO4 to invert it, but uh, I ended up just removing it completely. And the data enable on the transceiver, I just connected to ground. Um, I may just leave it that way. And on my processor card, it'll actually be connected to uh, hold acknowledge so that uh, it can float the, the data lines when the uh, DMA controller has control. Anyway, so pin 17 is disconnected. It's a PDEN. Uh, that's not used, and then 
Pin 18 is S2 with a pull-up resistor. Pin 19 is S0 with a pull-up resistor. And pin 20 is volt, uh, 5 volt with a decoupling capacitor. So that's how I've connected the 8288 to the project. Uh, the processor is very much the same as minimum mode on the address lines, and I've only connected the lower 16 lines here, 0 through 15. So that's I'm using 64 uh, kilobytes of memory. I put a uh, pull-up resistor on interrupt request and non-maskable interrupt here. Just cut out the interrupt controller altogether. And then I've got a the, the click pin here. And I used a uh, 27 re ohm resistor uh, kind of in line. And then ground here on pin 20. Ground is also on pin 1. The other side, you've got your reset coming off of the uh, system clock here the um, 21. 22 is your ready, comes off the system clock. There is nothing fancy here, it's just always ready. Test is pulled down. And then these are your status, your Q0 and Q1 here, which are used by the uh, 8087, uh, where I'll have, they're not connected. And then this is where your status lines are, your S0, 1, uh, and 2, which go up to the bus controller. Now your request and grant pins here, I just kind of pulled them up with a resistor. I think they're already pulled up internally, but I put that just as a fail safe. And then 32 is not connected. 33 is your min max designator and is connected to ground for maximum mode. Then pin 15 or address 15 is connected, but then 5 volt with a decoupling capacitor there. So that's how the processor is wired up just for this quick board. The clock is just wired up the way I've always wired them up. Got a, I got an 8 megahertz crystal on this one. Kind of wanted to run it real slow. And um, you know, I got our five volt, your crystals on the next two pins down, and then right below, let's see, so this would be 10, this 10's reset, 11 is your input for your reset, 12's not connected, 13 I connect to ground, 14's not connected, 15 is connected to ground, 16 and 17 are the crystal, and five volt, come down the other side, uh, pin one is connected to the ground, pin two is not connected, Pin 3 is ground, pin 4 is 5 volt, pin 5 is your ready, goes over the processor, pin 6 goes to 5 volt, pin 7 goes to ground, click out. So I separated, may not be able to see this, but both, I have a resistor for both the, the processor and the bus controller, each has a clock. And then, uh, actually let's just take that out now, probably don't need that. And then, uh, ground on the corner here. The uh, reset button, when you push it, it pulls it low, let go, it floats high for the reset. Uh, the rest, it's not really worth explaining too much. It, I mean, the memory is just wired up the way memory is supposed to be wired up. The 8255 is wired up the way an 8255 should be wired up, except for I don't have uh, decoding. So as far as the processor can see, it just repeats in the I.O. bus forever. So it, it's always chip selected. So you just have address 0 and address 1, which decodes the um, register you're writing to on the chip. But once you get up to, so it'd be out on port 3 would be the top register. If you go to port 4, you're back to the bottom. So it just repeats in the uh, I.O. like that. Uh, the transceiver, like I say, I ended up connecting the data enable to ground here. And what I normally do on my processor cards is the address on the address latches, the enable, I connect to hold acknowledge. And that allows that when the system is holding, it floats those address lines. And that's probably what I'm going to do with this data enable here is connect it to hold acknowledge as well. Because the data transmit receive determines the direction and it's, it's pretty much okay to have this thing active all the time, as long as the BMA controller doesn't have control of the bus. So anyway, let's uh, let's try it out again. See how many things I bumped and if it still works. Oh, it still works. So anyway, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, 
send me a message or leave a comment in the section below. I'm going to trade out this crystal for a 24 crystal. You see, that's much faster. So anyway, hopefully I can get a uh, max mode processor card produced soon with the 8087 and the ability for the DMA controller to work as well. So thanks for checking out my video today.